Today is going to be a continuation, a part two of this Corvette that somebody worked on and did a really horrible job. Um, I'm basically going to be actually putting together and repairing at this stage now. Hopefully I'll get quite a bit done. But there is a lot to do. I mean, if you've seen part one, there is a lot to do on this car yet. So I, uh, I got to get to it, but this guy, he... He's open to doing more, so we're going to fix a little bit more of the, the issues than originally planned because of how many I actually found. Uh, we were thinking that it wasn't going to be, I mean, we knew it was going to be bad, but not that bad. So we're going to fix a little bit more than, than originally talked about, and uh, he'll be a lot happier that way anyway. So uh, that's where we are, and we'll go from there. Okay, you see this cable here? This is uh, hooked up to a winch in the front of my garage here. And uh, what I do with these vehicles when they're unable to be run and I need to get something else in, I'll push them out and then I hook this strap to them, this cable for the winch, and I pull them in. That way I don't have to mess around with uh, push cars and all that stuff. Plus, you can't really push on the back of a Corvette, it'll damage the bumper. It's just a fiberglass plastic thing and it's not meant to be pushed on. So. This is my solution to being able to get them things up, up over the hoist and, and in place. Here is the uh, charge pipe, and this is one of the clamps. See, it's quite damaged, quite mangled, so I'm going to replace that clamp for sure. Um, and then you can look at the, through the pipe there, see this nasty little bend here? So, he must have put that harness in place before putting the cradle up, or yeah, it must have been before the cradle. That's the only thing I can explain it. It's uh, ran in a place that I can't even fit it through. So what I'm going to have to do next is take this cradle and drop it down, at least in this corner, so that I can get just enough room to pull the connector through and then run it back the right direction. Uh, there's a lot of wire loom pulled off. I don't know what kind of damage I'm going to find, but hopefully it's in fairly decent shape. But from what I've seen with the rest of the car, I doubt it. Okay, so the harness is actually in fairly decent shape. It's just the wire loom is off of it, which isn't that big of a deal. I'll uh, put it back on. I'll get some tape wrapped around it. It'll be good to go again. Um, this one's missing almost all its loom. I'm, all its tabs are off of here. They're not even on anything. They're just laying there hanging out. So I'll find what I can for where they go. I know they go to the cradle. Wow, some nasty electrical tape. Uh, this is some kind of fiber to the electrical tape. That's a lot of factory kind. A lot of times factory stuff that, uh, ah, so sticky too. Super, super gooey tape. So I'll uh, get all this cleaned up and then we'll be good to go and put it back where it belongs. I'm gonna have to clean some oil off of it too, it looks like. Imagine that. I just realized something. I disconnected, so these two wires are for, oh wow, yeah I can't even connect. I should actually grab you and show you that. These two wires here are both for the ABS, uh, the wheel speed sensors. I had a code for one of the fronts. It was probably for the left front by seeing what I'm seeing. So here is what's supposed to be, what's supposed to be the left front. 
See that thing in there? That goofy piece? That's actually part of the weather seal. So it, the connector must have came apart and he shoved that back on there, forced it on, even with the weather seal in the way. So I'll have to take that little red piece out and then push this red weather seal back to where it belongs. And this is for the left front. This one here was one that I actually disconnected. You can see it's filthy in there though. But uh, this one I disconnected, it was hooked to the left front. So he had it not, had him hooked up not only wrong, but didn't hook up the one that he, you know, because that seal is in the way. So everything I do, I find more problems. But uh, we'll get it patched up. We'll get this car running like it should again. Well, this is interesting. I uh, I just noticed something. You know, I'm doing those wheel speed sensor things right there, and. Uh, Somebody sent me a message asking about an oil feed on the front of the block, and I thought, I don't think I see one. So I started looking at the front of this block out of curiosity, and I noticed, I don't know if you can, there you go. See that bolt hole there? That's the timing cover. There's supposed to be a bolt in there. And then I zoomed over to this side, and to my not surprise with this particular vehicle and the condition it's in, I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty tough. Ah, I can't see it worth a darn. But that bolt is also missing, so... It's kind of funny how this guy does not put anything back together the way it should be. There we go. See that bolt hole there? Yeah, it's missing, so... I don't know how many more timing cover bolts are missing, but... I did notice those. Makes me wonder... I wonder if I could see any more. See that one's there, but I can't see anything else because the water pump's in the way. I don't know, regardless. We know there's missing bolts. So I'll have to try and find bolts to put in place of those too. A little more added to it. That's okay. We'll get it running right. So there's a ground up here. You saw it in the previous video um, when I was looking down into the motor and talking about a bracket that wasn't in the right spot. There's a little yellow connector. Uh, it's an add-on connector that he put on or, or someone put on. I guess I better not assume. Uh, but he, they must have shortened the wire. Whoever did it shortened the wire enough that it's too short. And so now I have to cut, splice, add wire, and then reconnect another one of those connectors a little bit further down the line because I can't pull the harness through as far as it should go through. Uh, it's sitting a little too close to one of the pulleys and on top of that it was on the wrong ground location as well. It works on that, I mean it's the block so it's correct in that it's the block but this one is supposed to be in another location right down further on the block. So. Oh, well, my soldering iron warms up. I just noticed something else. So this little, this little connector here, it's supposed to have like a, a joint in there that you cramp. It's supposed to be a butt connector. I don't even see the metal part of it. But he had that up there. You see those right here? This, oh, I'm bleeding. Nice. See that wire right there? And then this guy right here. Those are supposed to be connected together. That's the ground for the cam sensor. Uh, so this thing apparently had a cam sensor code as well that I was apparently not aware of. So I'm gonna have to address that. Um, but may maybe it was barely connected before I started yanking on the harness. I guess that's a possibility. But uh, it definitely needs to be repaired. So I'll be repairing that as well. Obviously the other wire is much longer than that wire. So I'm gonna have to put a wire in between there. I didn't see it. I don't know if you did, but there was a metal crimp deal on there. 
uh, it's not crypt correctly at all, but it is what it is. Um, looks like it was actually a like an eyelet or something, and obviously it's not an eyelet anymore. Uh, he cut the the eyelet end off of there. I think it would have came out here, been like a little, a really small version of an eyelet. Uh, not anymore. It's just he used it to make a butt connector, and it's not even a correct butt connector. So I don't know. That's what I'm gonna fix next. I actually have to peel some of this tape off because the wire is too short for me to even get my wire strip around there reasonably. Okay, so I got the wire repaired. You can see the, the heat shrink tubing there on each end, right? I gotta take and tuck it like that and then uh, tape it up. So now it's actually the correct length that'll plug in decent and won't be getting pulled on all the time. And uh, I even kind of matched the color. So the previous color was brown white stripe. Now it's white brown stripe which, eh, close enough. It's the closest I had. Regardless, it'll work. It's still a wire, a wire's a wire. Here's the other one. So, you can see the, the two grounds there. One's a small wire, one's a big wire. I hooked it up to one big wire, and then made it extra long, and hooked it up to an eyelet, which is crimped, oops, with the proper fashion of crimping. So, it's actually done correctly this time. I'll be hooking that up to the correct ground location, and then I got to run all the rest of the wires to their correct, like, cor correct correlating location as well. That way, they're not interfering with anything or going to rub. They're not going to knock all the stuff off. So, so in order to try and fix that connector for the ABS that had the seal popping out. The seal is now rolled and partially cut, but I'm able to roll it around right now so that it can be in a more reasonable position. I'm trying to. I'm going to pull it out. But uh, I had to break that little piece that I was squished against. Yeah, this seal will be salvageable. It was just rolled inside out. But that piece that I had to get out of there so I could get the seal out is now damaged. Uh, there's like a little external shield that has a center piece as well. The center piece is what holds the pins in, and that piece is still intact. The outside part holds the seal from coming off when you pull the connector out, and half of that is now missing. So, as long as the seal is in position when I put it on, it'll still seal and still work properly. But if a person pulls it off again, they'll have to reposition the seal most likely. So now I gotta take and get the bracket for the ABS module and put it in place. The rubber bushing for the bottom is missing, I'm pretty sure. I'll go check now, actually. I'll grab it. Yeah, I kind of thought so. So there's supposed to be a rubber bushing right here on this bottom peg, and it's to center the bottom of that module. And then there's a rubber bushing on either side of the module that's supposed to have a stud coming through it. And that uh, stud, then you throw a nut on the other side. Well, I'm probably going to end up having to make studs. I don't see any studs in there, but I do see the rubber bushings. So I'll come up with some kind of solution to this, and then I'll get this attached properly so that it's not flopping around anymore. So here's those rubber bushings that go inside there. I gotta have a stud either come through this way or come through that way. Okay, so I came up with a pretty easy solution to this. And what it is, so I added a nut here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand this down to create a little bit different shape on this and make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't expand the rubber quite as much. But it'll also have more contact before it tightens down. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand this down, and then uh, I'll come right back and we'll be ready to rock and roll, put this thing together.
Okay, got a little bit better solution. I took and sanded them down so that they match in size and are a little bit smaller. Uh, notice there's a flat spot on opposite sides. That's uh, just to make an attempt at giving it a small amount of bite so that I'll be able to tighten it down. Uh, otherwise, it would just spin freely in there. So I'm going to give this a shot now. Hopefully it works. As far as this, I'll be putting a hose on here to hold it up and center it. It should work out fine just with a regular old hose. Here's my rubber hose. I gotta cut it down a little bit, but it's sitting there. It's almost ready. Okay, so I got the module connected up here but I had to force it up so see where it's at up there it's way higher than it was now I had to force it pretty badly so I think it's pushing against some of those hoses pretty hard um, that'd be my guess so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop the vehicle down and make sure I get all those hoses and lines and whatever else is up there out of the way before I take, let's see if I can get you to see that. Okay, you see the cradle right there in the middle where it's dropped down? I have it, I have it dropped down enough for that socket and washer to fit up there, holding it down lower. So I have to take and make sure that I get enough clearance for that to be able to go up that much more. And then uh, after I'm done doing that, I have to drop it back down and then play with these harnesses harness and hoses to get them away from that pulley because I don't want that pulley to be rubbing against anything so another thing I noticed is threading this bolt in see the one sticking out quite a ways well it bottomed out like just all of a sudden it was threaded in fine and then it just bottomed out right away uh, I think there's maybe a broken bolt in there or something because the other one was the, the bottom one there is able to go in quite a ways and has no problem um, so I gotta do something with that top one, but I'm, first I'm gonna figure out what the clearance issue is. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. So, these uh, cooling systems have this goofy T for this uh, uh, vent vapor or whatever thing. It's basically the cylinder heads to, to make sure they get all the air bubbles out of the cylinder heads and there's a cross pipe and then another coolant pipe that comes up to a hose and then that hose goes to these hoses to a T on this hose here and he's got no hose clamp here this is vacuum line it's not intended for any kind of pressure it's pretty weak actually and then he's got the T with no clamps on it either so no clamps whatsoever uh, I wonder if the O-ring is missing on the cap. That would explain why it hasn't blown off. Well, the O-rings are there. They're squished flat, but they're intact. And it felt like it was sealing. Maybe it's got enough that it can hold, but I wouldn't trust it. So I guess I'll have to fix that too. Okay, that's much better, a lot safer. Uh, maybe I'll throw one more zip tie on here, but overall, that's a lot better than it was. So, big improvement there. Notice I cut that line that was uh, excessively long. If I would have tidied it up like this, it would have actually been rubbing against the, the water pump pulley over here. So, that's why I had cut that. Okay, so this hole here is actually cross-threaded. Um, so 
somebody must have really reefed it in there because the threads are okay for so far only because it's sitting there at an angle until it gets to a certain point and then there's a big ridge of the aluminum actually mushrooming and pushing out. Uh, so I'm going to have to run a tap in there and get it to clean up. Jeez. <laughs> I just went to loosen the AC tensioner. It wasn't even tight. I could have just unthreaded it by hand. Didn't even need the ratchet. Scary how many things are loose on this car. See if it got beat up at all because of that, or if it stayed. Must have been on there enough. It was rubbing a little bit, not bad though. I suppose 500 miles doesn't have much time to do much damage. But let's see here if I can get you to see this. Okay, so you see this little spot right here. The reason that it looks like it's dusty or dirty is because it's got. Uh, powder on it from rubbing back and forth. So if I wipe that off, i get something cleaner to wipe it off with. My hands are just as dirty as it is. Okay. I'm going to wipe this off really good for you here. See if we can see it. Okay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is like a little, little mark right there. That's from this thing not being tight and it just sitting there vibrating back and forth a little bit. Uh, you know, the spring here can only respond so quick, and this thing's normally going to have tension against it. And there's kind of a ding right here, too, from beating up, you know, just sitting there going like that. A lot shorter amount, but going like that and beating against it. Made in Canada. Well, that's a first. Don't see that very often. But, uh, yeah, so... Tighten bolts down. Important. What's even more important is installing the bolts in the first place. That's usually pretty helpful too. So here's the idler pulley that sits down on the bottom. It's sitting in there like this, right? It was actually tight. This bolt was tight, so he had that going tight at least. Now, might as well pull you off of there. Because you weren't able to see this before. But the bolt that is missing for the timing cover. Right there, you see that? Yeah, we should probably get a new bolt there. Oh, there's that piece of hose I dropped out to pull that out. Or if there's anything else missing. I see the other bolts look like they're intact, so at least I don't have to do those. Okay, I got the oil cooler lines out of the way, the wiring harness, everything looks like it's where it should be and how it should be as far as that goes. Now I have to take the clutch uh, bleeder, there's like a bleeder hose, and uh, it was too close to the exhaust and melting. The clutch does not release worth of crap right now. So I'd imagine there's probably an air pocket in it, it probably boiled the fluid, so I'm going to have to bleed it to get it to work, but before I bleed it, I'd be wasting my time. I need to move that line to where it's actually out of the way and it's not going to have any issues with heat again. Uh, so I had to cut a couple zip ties and reroute where it was laid out.
Okay, so that extra wire that was there obviously must not be getting used. Um, the car ran, but it goes to a booster pump. Uh, and if that wire is completely severed, then the car technically shouldn't have run if it was being used. So I'm going to end up pulling that through and out and getting rid of it. No reason to have that wire just hanging there burning on the exhaust like every other wire that's in this car. So I'll uh, move that thing out of the way and get out of there. So I'm going to give you a quick glance at where I'm at with this opening here. Okay, so you can see there's lots of room in this area for the header to go now. I got everything tucked, tucked up tight against the firewall. There's nothing even close to the header except for kind of sort of that harness, but that should clear plenty. Um, if it is too close, I can maybe try and do something with it, but it should be plenty far away. So, a lot better than it was when it came in. There's that harness all tucked under there the way it's supposed to be, as best as I can. Limited resources here. Here's the ABS module actually mounted. I can't push up on it with my light anymore. So, that's definitely a bonus. Got the harness tucked in there. Everything clears the pulley easily. Have the ABS harness looped in its little eyelets like it's supposed to be so that's a good thing uh, that's clearing everything that belt still has to be attached I'm gonna have to go after that hose for that power steering reservoir eventually here next I'm gonna attack these transmission lines get them accomplished as far as getting them up to the front I just got done talking to the to the dealer about the lines and they are on back order there he was waiting for the UPS truck to show up today uh, he was hoping that they were going to show up today so we'll see what happens there but uh, if it doesn't it should show up this week sometime I'm hoping sooner than later I received the starter so I'll be able to get that in maybe I'll do that next in fact just pop the starter into place get that done and out of the but would you imagine that this stud doesn't wiggle anymore. Okay, so a little look quick at uh, where this thing sits. I took and I got these lines. See, I got the other one adapted there, or attached. Goes up, nice and smooth. Attached to its bracket. Up and over here. Comes down. Leaves plenty of room. Tucked very close to the bell housing. And then it goes up into another bracket, which wasn't even there before. I had to add that. It's supposed to be there. And then it goes to that fitting which will hook to the cooler line and the other one here which will hook to the cooler line once I get them I just have to adapt them to these ANs and then they will go to their correct location on the radiator so here's where I sit there so I'm gonna go ahead and put this tunnel brace back on uh, I have everything else I, can find my I have everything else so that it's Got tons of room. So you can see up here, plenty of room for the header now. Still have to hook that plug in, it goes right there. But uh, got plenty of room here now for the header. There's the O2 sensor. I'll actually 
tuck that up, zip tie it probably like where those zip ties are in order to keep it from falling down as soon as I hook the O2 up. That ground I'm going to have to hook somewhere else as soon as I find a place to hook it. This ground that was up on that header bolt, I now ran right, see that peeled spot? It is now run right there to that bell housing bolt. Uh, I think somebody has shortened it, I'm not sure, either that or it's tucked up somewhere, but it's supposed to go, you know, like right there. So I'm going to pull that ground off, move it up there, and then uh, that should be pretty well tidied up for that area. And so I'll get that bracket on, get the exhaust on, and I'll be getting ready to button this thing up, hopefully somewhat soon here. A few more things to do on it, but it's coming along nicely. Okay, so what you just saw me doing is uh, trying to get this tube adjusted. I couldn't leave it the factory uh, bend because of that coil tag having to go back here. Uh, the wires are not long enough in order to be able to like, move the coil tag over in the corner or something. So I still have to have it here, I just have to find a better way to bracket. Now I noticed there's a bracket here that's for that coil. It was not attached, so I'm going to make sure that's attached. And then I'll get the other one put back. And uh, I think if I actually tighten things down, it might not be too bad. So I got this so that it's tucked as close to that valve cover as possible. Uh, and then I bent it this way in order to allow for more room for that coil. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I got enough room here. If not, uh, I guess I'll just have to figure something else out. But it, sh it should work out. Now I got to uh, get the header all tightened up and. I had to pull a knock sensor connector in order to do this. It was in my way, but I'll have to put that on from underneath.
So not only were the threads on this thing barely in contact with this guy, it actually looks like I ripped the one and a half threads out on two of these holes. So it was in one of the two, I think it was this one. Um, I'm gonna be putting it in this one because it's closer to where it needs to be as far as the adjustment. But this deal here, it was only threaded in, as you can see, it's only threaded in about two threads. So it wasn't even on there very good with just the one washer. So I got a bolt that is substantially longer I'm going to put that in place and that'll actually give it some good thread contact. And then as far as the other bolt goes, here's the original, where did I put the, there it is. And it had a small washer, I don't know where I put it, but it had a small washer between the bracket deal here and the, the plate. And so I'm going to take and put this big washer between the plate and that and then the small washer between this and that deal that way it's got some support and it's obviously a lot longer bolt so it should work a hell of a lot better than it did before and not be so twisted <laughs> so I was like why would they give it so many threads when it could only go so far because it was creaking there and uh, I just realized why this numbnuts before or someone at some point I assume the numbnuts before he uh, has a socket on here yet I was wondering like quarter inch drive that's kind of neat that they give it a quarter inch drive so it's nice and easy for me but uh, there's still a socket here so I'm gonna knock that off here and show you once So, oops, eh, that, didn't, that didn't go in order. Uh, here's a socket. It's a half inch El Cheapo socket. And apparently he has it on there for a reason. The head of this thing is completely gone. It's just round. So I'm going to have to figure out, I'm going to have to take it off here and probably grind it down or, I don't know, attach something to it, but it's brass. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'll, I'll figure something out here. This is not acceptable for how it's going to be. So, I'll take that apart and try and figure that out. If it's not one thing, it's another, right? So I was trying to come up with something that would work here. Um, this thing was not going to work out. I tried drilling it thinking I could, you know, since I can't tighten this, it's too thin here to, to grind down a flat spot, so on and so forth. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe I could drill this out, put a nut on the one end and try it. That didn't work. Uh, there's too much interference with this. So it needs to be a close contact type of a thing. Uh, so what I did instead is I took and I made my own deal. I got some lube in here. This is a steel piece. There's a heel coil inside here. Uh, this is a washer that's welded on. This is a socket, cheap, cheapo socket that's welded on, but it's a 3 8 He had a little quarter inch drive on there. Uh, figure 3 8 is going to be a little bit, a little bit stronger, longer lasting. So now this thing can actually go farther in because it's a deep well. It just barely clears this, so that should work a hell of a lot better. The only thing I have left to do is I think I need to sand this down, but I'm going to test fit it and find out. I think this diameter is just a little too big. It uh, goes a little bit past this flat spot here. So I don't think I'm going to be able to push it all the way down. So I'll do that quick and then uh, I'll be putting this on. Okay, so I'm sitting here battling this thing and I'm going, what in the hell, why can't I get it to cooperate, right? Well, this thing is sitting in there crooked. It's uh, like pushing on the belt all funky. You can see it's it's kind of tight against it here. And it's way open over here. So this thing is coming apart. What I'm going to attempt here is I see that this sleeve in here is actually threaded to this aluminum. And that sleeve is part of this big bolt configuration. So I think that holds it together. And I'm hoping that I can thread that tighter and squeeze that in. 
uh, and try and accomplish getting it to work properly. So I'm going to give that a shot quick. I'll probably end up putting a couple of bolts or something in the in these holes and using that to to verify that the thing still functions properly after I tighten it down. So I'm going to go do that and uh, I suppose I'll take you with you so you can see the process. So welcome to my disastrous toolbox here. This thing is just a, a nightmare of stuff and parts and everything going on. Uh, too many projects, not enough day, not enough hours in a day. Anyway, uh, I'll clean it someday. But here's the tensioner. We're going to throw it in the vise like this. First thing I'm going to do is give it a little shot here. See how it responds to different pulling and pushing on it. I see I got it in the vise a little funky. There's a couple of uh, bolt holes for what hold the jaws on. I had one in the, the hole there. Okay. Okay, so I don't see any flex, which concerns me a little bit that it might be worn out. You might ask why I'm using a hammer. Well, the guy that's been working on this thing has that head kind of mangled and there's not much to grab a hold of to begin with so I'm doing what I can to make it salvageable here oh that's interesting it's leveling out a little weird oh wait no it's going the other way so that's loosening it okay ready loosey lefty tidy I guess Now it's getting tight. Okay. Oh, now I just felt it. Felt it kind of stop. So I'm going to stop there just to be sure that I can move this thing yet. Oh, I can, but look at it. It doesn't return. Maybe I'll go until it just returns. I wonder if I don't need to lubricate that thing or something. I'm almost scared to take it apart though. Well, it is sitting better. I feel like I need it tighter though. Okay, so it still moves. So I'm going to go a little bit tighter yet. I'll hold this back. Kind of trying to feel this thing out and see what it see now it's too tight I'm just gonna go a little bit a little increments at a time until I feel like it feels like it should I guess I don't know how else to describe it oh there so I gotta go a little bit tighter not by much but that was there we go okay that's actually just the threads of the bolt moving, not the tensioner. Okay, so now that that is tight, let's see if it looks like it's sitting right. Look at that, we got a nice even gap all the way around now. So that should be a lot better as far as how it acts. Now, my concern is it came off of there so I'm thinking I want to put a little dent in there to keep it from coming loose or maybe you know what I got some special Loctite it's a green Loctite it's supposed to soak into the threads I'm gonna put that on there it's uh, the same stuff the manufacturers use during assembly and its main purpose is after assembly they just take and they drip this on all the little bolts and whatnot and it's supposed to seep into the threads. And I've actually seen it, and it seems like that's what it does, but I haven't verified it on anything I've put it on yet because I just started using it. Woo! Woo! Spilled out everywhere. One thing I will say is the stuff is extremely thin, so it would not surprise me if it does go into the threads. There. OK. 
Okay, so I'll just let that sit like that for a little bit. Okay, I'm back. It seems to have soaked in and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together in hopes that it works properly now. It definitely didn't feel right. That's a perfect hammer. Okay, so now it is actually going how it should. The only problem I have is this bolt is sticking out too far, so I think I'm going to change that. I would set that up there, but there's no room. I have to do some major cleaning. But, uh, got quite a bit done today. Not as much as I wanted to. That, uh, ten don't fall. Don't fall. That tensioner situation is, uh, taking a lot more time than I wanted to. Uh, but you know what? You can't win all the battles. I got the oil cooler situation, the, the transmission cooler situation almost completed. I just received the line not that long ago while I was doing the tensioner. And, uh, so I'll be doing that tomorrow morning along with finishing off this tensioner situation. It's got me concerned. There's a couple little things that are that are bothering me. Uh, the one bolt that I had in there originally was too long, right? So I took the spacer out, pushed it in, and it started to tip that tensioner again. So I have to put a shorter bolt in. I figured that out pretty quick. And uh, I'm going to do that next. But the thing that's really bothering me is when I did tension it earlier, the whole bracket, like the whole supercharger bracket, twisted or, or moved. So, with, with that happening, I'm concerned that if it's too tight, the belt will shred. If it's too loose, the belt will shred. Um, or it's just slip. But, I'm a little concerned that that thing isn't stable enough or sturdy enough on that bracket. I think that that supercharger is going to be moving around and it's going to be shaking and everything else. I don't think it's going to be very very reliable as far as the belt goes. Those belts are really picky on these things, so I'll have to uh, look into that a little bit more tomorrow. But uh, other than that, it was a it was a pretty good day. So uh, like, share, subscribe, pass the video on. Let's uh, let's let's keep these things going and hopefully not run into too many of these horrible disasters. But uh, yep, there will be a part three. Expect to see it. Uh, I'll put the subscribe link on the page and the, the part three when it comes out. I'll be putting that up in the corner too. So uh, subscribe and click on the link for the next next deal when it comes out. Thank you.